Okay, so I thought I would do a little um, tutorial video for some friends that seem to be having some difficulties with uh, HurtMapper. Uh, so there's two ways to enter data. You can either use the mobile app, which I find um, difficult at times, or you can use the, the computer version, which I think is way more straightforward and user-friendly. And since most of my pictures are with my real camera and not my cell phone, um, it makes sense for me to use this method instead of uh, the mobile method. So this is the main page, hurtmapper.org, and once you've signed up and registered, uh, you'll find your name in the upper right hand corner, and if you click on it, you have the option of my records, my files, upload files, or add new record. Uh, the first thing I always do whenever I'm wanting to add new files is click on upload files, uh, take into this page, click on add files, and then you find yourself um, navigate to the folder where you have your pictures, select an image, and click the start upload button. Obviously you can upload more than one. And once that's complete, uh, then go back to your name and click on the My Files button. And so this is a queue of all of my pictures that I have yet to enter. And then at the bottom is the most recent image I just tried to, uh, I just added. So when it comes time to creating a new record, um, each image has a little checkbox in the upper left hand corner. Click that little checkbox and go to create new record. All right, and so this is where we enter our data. So the species name can be either scientific name or common name, but as we know, common names can be, um, there can be a lot of common names sometimes. So for me, I always go with scientific name. Okay, so Tramesterus stechnegeri, the green tree viper. Um, okay, now if you took the picture with a cell phone and had your GPS turned on at the time, then the latitude and longitude will automatically be filled in. But if you're using a normal camera that doesn't have that ability, then it's blank and you need to find it. So here we have a map of the world and a little search box to you know, get you close to where you were. So for me, uh, it's going to be Wuishan, China. Uh, click on satellite to help you find out where you were. And zoom in to your location. Obviously, if you're, if this is something that you found near your place, uh, I would expect you to be pretty familiar with your own neighborhood and whatnot. Familiar sites. Okay, so here's the hotel where I was staying at. And if you walked this way where this road met with this road, uh, right there is where I found that snake. So you just tap on the map and it creates a coordinate for you. Um, this is very important because being accurate is kind of the whole point of this. If you're not sure of your location, then you really shouldn't even bother entering the, the data point because if the data is, if the location is, I guess, not accurate, then there's no point in even bothering. Um, okay, so once you enter your latitude and longitude, Accuracy, I usually go with 3 meters if I'm using Google Earth because, yeah, plus or minus 12 feet, sure. If you used a GPS, uh, you have different datums to choose from. Uh, for your coordinate source, you have options of either Google Earth or a GPS or online map. Uh, so in this case, it was Google Earth. But if it was uh, my cell phone, then I would click on GPS. Uh, you fill in the age of the animal and whether or not it's dead or alive. 
and then you have this option to hide this record from the public. Um, I rarely use this. This is only mainly for extremely sensitive species. Uh, in all of my records, I think I've done this once. And then you can add additional notes here. Um, whatever you want, whether you found it at night or if it was under something or whatever. Typically, I leave this blank unless it was pretty significant or interesting. And then you just go to the bottom and click on Save Record. Okay, and it's done. And there's the coordinate. And so now if you were to go back to your name and click on My Records, there it is right there. Click on it again and it shows you that uh, screen we just saw a couple seconds ago. So that's how you do it. Um, pretty simple in my opinion. All right, I guess that's it. Oh, uh, one more thing I did want to mention. Uh, so some people, I think, are probably kind of wary about entering data online because they feel like if they, you know, pinpoint an exact location where they found something, then it might lead other people to that location. And I understand that, of course. Um, but this program hides records from the public. So, you know, in what we just now did, you saw where how accurate you can show your data point down to the street level. Um, but that's not, that's only accessible to you and conservation agencies. So, for example, uh, if we were to just click anywhere here on the map, um, it then gives us an option to search by country. So to give you an example of how inaccurate these sites are compared to, or for the general public, all right, I clicked on Hong Kong. Um, let's see, let's see, a mock viper. So a lot of these records are mine. Um, click on the mock viper. And so if I was just a general public trying to look at this location to try to find out where to go, here's, that's the data point. Let's see, I guess this can't zoom in anymore. Um, well, hopefully you can see right there. And that's not very accurate. If you're a poacher or somebody that's trying to, trying to uh, find herping locations, this one point right there takes up all of Hong Kong uh, and goes well into China as well. So um, safety-wise, from keeping your herping spot safe or if you're worried about poachers poaching sensitive species, uh, that's not an issue right there. So that's the other thing I wanted to reiterate to people is that even though you're entering very specific information from the general public's point of view, uh, it's very, very broad. That one point right there would also take up all of Taiwan. Okay, now I'm done.